Daisy here, the Frugal Crafter. Welcome to the Room of Horde, or my supply closet, I should say. Um, I had undergone the process of decluttering and bringing in my pottery wheel so that I could have all of my kind of messy, crafty stuff together in this area. And um, I did a video on kind of cleaning it up, moving stuff around. You can find that on my YouTube channel if you want. And I asked if anyone would be interested in seeing an in-depth supply tour, seeing like what I have in the drawers and all that nitty gritty stuff. And um, and then it occurred to me as I was recording this earlier today and asking people if they would like that, it would make way more sense just to go ahead and record this right now. So, um, so here we are. If people ask for it, I'll have it done. If people don't ask for it, then um, I, I guess I'll just waste an hour of my time or whatever, <laughs> but I'm okay with that. Uh, and I hope you are too. So I work in a basement. I've been in this space since probably about two, 2006. I think my daughters were about two when we had um, a company come in and do a, uh, uh, a perimeter ditch on the inside of our basement. We had a wet basement and our, our foundation was too low to do exterior trenches. So uh, anyway, this company came in called Basement Systems and I think it's like, I think that's a, a national franchise in case you have a, I'm not endorsing them. It worked great for me. Um, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever, but that's, that's who did this. And um, then we had a dry basement and I had gone from having a four room suite downtown Bangor where I taught classes to the public, uh, to being a stay-at-home mom with um, no studio space at home at all. I used to have a studio downtown and one bedroom in our house was a uh, studio. And I went from that to just kind of cramming art supplies in wherever I could. So as soon as the basement was dry, I kind of um, carved out this area. And I said, this is mine. I'm taking it because uh, we didn't have anything in the basement anyway because it always flooded. Um, and this is where it all started. And then a couple years later, when the girls were old enough for pre-K, I decided that I was going to turn this into a business. And um, and here we are. Here we are 15 years later. So uh, let's get to it. Behind me is a, since this is the basement, that's a, a cement wall. That's a mural that I did with chalk pastels, just some inexpensive ones. I thought I wanted to get kind of like summer camp vibes with the pottery wheel. I thought that'd be really fun. And uh, the pottery wheel is a Vivor pottery wheel. It's nothing very expensive. I think they run around uh, $200. So I have this set up so that um, it is just the right height. I, I would scooch up a little bit closer, but it's just the right height for me to work. And um, I've got my, well, I got a splash pad on there. I guess I'll have to bring the camera over a little bit closer because I've got all my tools around here where I can reach them. I've got some sponges here. I've got carving tools. These are the tools. They're kind of like backups. I don't need them all the time. I've got my little trimming disc there that a beautiful viewer sent me. And these are uh, pieces of plywood that are covered with canvas. You can see I stapled the back. I have a video on that. Um, and a piece of like non-slip uh, shelf liner under there. I got my ribs and these are the tools I use all the time. I will set things on these to dry or to transport other places. The canvas makes it so the clay doesn't stick. Under here, I usually have a, um, I usually have a bucket of slip under there. Right now I have uh, two 25 pound bags of clay or almost that much and another bag of clay that I found from previous projects and I have a clay cutter in there. Um, in the kind of shelf over there, I have more canvas sewn um, canvas squares for rolling out slabs of clay. And then if I go up, that's not clay stuff. This is all alcohol inks. And I just keep all my alcohol inks in these drawers and al alcohol ink applicators and all that jazz because um, it's just a good place to keep it out of the way. I don't need to get to it very often. And I just grab my the drawers out and take them where I want to use them. There's my wheel. It's a 14 inch wheel. It's got like half a horsepower, I think. It's it's wonderful. Um, and that's just a bucket of slip. Actually, um, I've been kind of letting that dry out so I can put some of that slip in a smaller container and then um, reclaim the rest of the clay into clay again so I can make more stuff with it. I did use, because the Vivor pottery wheel is pretty short, um, so I took bed risers and I put them under there and I leveled my wheel so you could see, I don't know if you can see this or not, I'm just going to tighten that down so hopefully it doesn't droop. I put a, um, 
a piece of plywood under that one because it was just a little bit off and that keeps it level and it probably wouldn't matter to anybody that's really experienced but I find it's a lot easier to throw a centered pot if my wheel is level. If you're an experienced potter it probably doesn't matter that much. And I put a couple blocks under my uh, footstool there so that when I rest my arms on my legs my um, my hand doesn't hit the splash pan because I, I, I think over time that could give you, give you some nerve damage. So there is that. I'm going to spin around. This shelf here I took out of the office because uh, I didn't need it anymore in there and I'm just using it to store pots and pots and whatnots I suppose. Canvases are light so I put them high. Uh, if they fall they're not going to really hurt anyone. Um, they might get broken but I've never had that happen. Uh, then I've got some just random stuff, some decorative stuff. I've got uh, some displays for jewelry, the, the styrofoam head for displaying um, hats and then I've got a little bust behind there for displaying necklaces and I've got my jars of of uh, solvent for oil painting. I've got extra hands for jewelry making. That's what these things are right there. And behind these paper towels I have my jewelry um, pliers and whatnot. And I have a few fashion and anatomy books up there that I'll grab if I need some drawing inspiration or like I'm drawing a person and I want to put an outfit on them. There's all my brushes. They're, they're divided by subject matter. So these, this whole tray is actually watercolor brushes and these are all, um, I do have watercolor brushes in my filming area. These are all my extras. I didn't keep so many in there. Um, this is, these are acrylics here in the middle. And then over here, I have all my oil painting brushes. So, and I got my stenciling brushes in here. So, um, I kind of keep them separated by genre so that way I know what's what and I don't cross contaminate my brushes. And in my office I don't have oil brushes and well I have a few oil brushes but not many. I come back and just grab a pot for whatever I need and then I keep like a little uh, a small cup full of acrylic and gouache brushes. I'll use acrylic and gouache brushes for the same thing. So now let's look at the drawers that are in this cabinet. This is one of my favorites. It's a shallow drawer and it's filled with pigment powders and these uh, I have my brushos in there which give you beautiful effects on watercolor paper. Um, I have mica powders. I have uh, all sorts of like iridescent watercolory things but mostly just powders in there and then I can just grab all the trays of whatever I need for whatever project so I don't have to take the whole drawer out. Like I can if I need perlex I can just grab the uh, the drawer of perlex and it works works really well, very organized. The next drawer down is um, has my watercolor crayons and watercolor kind of like water soluble oil pastels like gelatos and you know even some of these budget kind of crayons. Um, Jane Davenport uh, aqua pastels and her color sticks. Stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. Um, they all pretty much work the same so I keep them all together and uh, I keep my Neo Color 2's. My favorite one is in my office. That's my Neo, Col Neo Color 2's. In here I have, uh, these are iridescent oil pastels and there's just a set of 72 oil pastels and I figure if I was going to go out and paint somewhere I could just bring that set and be good and uh, all my other oil pastels are in a um, they're in a chest of drawers in my office because they're the ones I would use often. Then I've got just backups to refill my classes, my um, palettes for my students. So this is the Phoenix Artist Watercolors, which are actually identical to Cotman watercolors, and I have Cotman palettes I teach with, so I refill with those. And then I've got some other um, just backup tube watercolor type things that I would use to refill student palettes as needed. And the bottom drawer is super boring but super necessary. It is, oh if I can get it open, it's a pretty full drawer. Um, it's all office supplies. So I have like, uh, you know, extra pens, extra you know, sharpies, folders, notebooks, staples, post-it notes, pencils. This is all pencils. I'll bring that to like classes when I need to. Rulers, just the boring stuff, tape refills, that sort of thing is all in there and it's packed a little tighter than I normally would have something packed but um, you know you don't need to get into it too often. You can find what you need and you know it's pretty it's pretty easy to figure out what you're what you're after. Um, oh and that tote there is all of my teaching supplies because I teach watercolor uh, so if I'm going to a class, I just bring this whole cart on the bottom. This was actually a crop and style stamping cart. So it had like drawers in here. So I've got 
oh, I've got about 30 palettes in the bottom. I've got water cups, a couple stacks of water cups. I've got tape, little spray bottles, um, erasers. In the top, I can keep, um, I got pencils. I got a chart that shows the, the uh, orientation of my palettes. I've got postcards, watercolor postcards. I got a big, big fat pad of watercolor paper. Um, actually, I got a couple pads of watercolor paper. And then there's this tall area here where I have these cookie tins. And these cookie tins are filled with the brushes that I teach with. Now, each of the palettes have a brush in them, but um, then I've got larger flats and rounds and stuff in these tins. So I hope that's in camera. Um, so, you know, whenever you get something, especially around Christmas time, you'll sometimes get some really interesting packaging and tins. Think if those can be used for studio storage because, you know, you can always spray paint them if you don't like whatever color or pattern there is. But often they're really handy and they're free because, you know, if you buy anything that is designed to store art supplies, you're going to pay top dollar. So why not reuse the stuff you got and uh, spend, then you have more money to spend on your supplies. You don't have to spend money on, uh, on other stuff, right? Okay, let's look at the bookshelf here. I'm just going to move it on over. We're moving on over. Okay, so up high there, I've got some extra frames and I've got my marker paper. And that thing hanging from the rafters there, that is a, uh, it folds out into like a cube and it's a, it's a wonderful cart for storing art supplies. And it has this, uh, this canvas thing that slides over it, which I actually just keep, I washed it and threw it and dried it and threw it in a bag and I just tie it up so it doesn't get all dusty because I don't need to use it that often. But if I'm doing like a kid's craft class down at the library, I can load that puppy up with everything. It's just one big open thing with pockets on the sides. It's quite nice, but I don't need to keep it um, out getting dusty all year long. Then I have watercolor paper. So here I've got my Fabriano Studio pads. These are great. They're such a good value. They're 25% cotton, 75% cellulose. Um, the hot press is excellent for stamping and die cutting. The cold press is great for swatches and for, um, you know, like kids projects, kids crafts and stuff. They're great value. I highly recommend those pads. You get 50 sheets in a pack of 140 pound paper or you get 75 sheets in a pack of 90 pound paper um, and it's nice and nice and sturdy stuff then i've got my arches watercolor paper i've got a couple arteza 9 12 sketchbooks um more arches paper this is like a lot of this is my higher end watercolor cotton watercolor paper i have some cheaper stuff too um like i like the arteza expert paper and i like the arteza sketchbook so i have a few of those in there probably more than i need this big one is a handmade sketchbook for my friend rosie um i've got some wind power paper they don't make this anymore it was a strathmore more product and i loved it i love that paper but they no longer make it sadly um but it was a recycle was it recycled it was made it was uh it was a eco-friendly paper i really i really enjoyed it and then I've just got another sketchbook that I need to finish up. Some of those, uh, those, those have all had some pages used. So that's why it takes me forever to do a sketchbook because I'm always using a few at once. The next row down, um, I have a variety of mixed media sketchbooks. So these first ones are mixed media. Then I've got a marker sketchbook and I've got some toned drawing papers. Um, I love this paper right here. This is the Strathmore Toned Mixed Media. It's really robust, really sturdy, takes a bunch of different media. I like to use alcohol markers and then use colored pencils on top. Tone Tan is my favorite, but um, they also have gray, which I like, and then they have a blue, a green, and a black. And I just, I don't have the blue or green, and I just bought a pad of the black to try out. It's kind of like a cardstock. Um, I've got pastel mat and pastel papers, mitant. Um, this is another great paper that I recommend. It's a Canson XL Dry Mix Media. Great for pastels, really good for oil pastels. Nice for a colored pencil. It's uh, got a pebbly texture to it. Not quite sandy, but almost. It's a wonderful paper and very affordable. You get 40 sheets for um, about six or seven dollars. And uh, more colored pastel papers, like a vellum. And then uh, I got art books below that. And one of my favorite art books is, uh, if you like watercolor, if you can find it, it's out of print, but it is Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About Watercolor by Marion Apeloff. I highly recommend uh, seeking this out. You can find them used on Amazon, sometimes really inexpensively. And I'm just going to go through and pull out my favorites because 
there's so many good art books, you know. Um, this series is one of my favorites. This is the Artist Photo Reference series. I've mentioned it before in videos, and um, what I what I did, I bought a few brand new. I used to be in the Northlight Book Club, and that was probably back in the late '90s, early 2000s, and um, and I bought a few. And I really like them, but I guess I couldn't afford the whole series. So recently, the last couple of years, oh, probably four or five years ago, I started looking for these on Amazon and I collected them. And I paid generally about $5 a book, but the most, one I, the most I ever paid was $25. And that was to get the Songbirds one. But all the other ones I got for under $10, including shipping. Usually you have to pay shipping extra. Um, a lot of these came from thrift books. But these are just wonderful reference books, especially if you're like me and you get distracted when you're online looking for a reference material. Um, these are meant for artists to be art artist reference material, and they are just fantastic. And, um, oh, another set of books that I really liked, uh, I'll pull this up from the bottom shelf, are these, um, these Memories of a Lifetime. They would have a CD where you could print the stuff off for, like, collaging or whatnot, and they also had... Um, they also have the pictures in here. I would just print them off from the CD, but I don't know. I like that because I like to do a lot of vintage like card making and whatnot and crafting and I thought these were fun. And also they're fun to use as reference images too because especially if you're trying to get like that vintage vibe in a painting. And yeah, I mean I have a lot of different art books, but those are some of my favorites. I think no matter what you like to paint, they're, they're pretty good, pretty good picks for that. Now moving over to the corner here, um, I have mat board and canva and like a couple large canvases under that sheet. I'm not going to move it because it's very boring to look at. Um, and then in this, the rest of this gap here that I have between my bench and those uh, mat boards is big portfolio envelopes. And oops, my camera is moving. So I'll just bring one out in case you're not familiar with what these are. Oh, they're also full and heavy. Um, oh my gosh, maybe this one's not so heavy. So there are these big envelopes. Yeah, this one's probably a new one. So there are these big, um, basically like nylon or canvas, uh, big pockets basically. And so I keep my larger artworks in there that are not framed yet and ignore them until I get around to framing them, maybe someday in my lifetime, but they live there. And I have probably... Oh, about seven of them, and I have one that's just like pastels because I don't want them to drop dust anywhere. Now here on that top shelf, way up there, that's just a um, an old like kind of scrapbook bag, but I have patterns in it. Patterns that I've actually sewn myself. Maternity pattern. Huh, I might have gotten rid of my maternity patterns, but it was like maternity and kids' clothes patterns mostly. Um, those are all oil pastels for workshops that uh, actually a company sent me because they needed the space in their Amazon um, warehouse, I guess. So they just sent they sent me these huge boxes of pastels. I was very surprised to see them. Um, then I've got plates for my die cut machines um, and accessories for my die cut machines there. Those are two boxes of watercolor cards I use for classes. Then I've got a box full of wire, and then that's an empty brush box that I painted that... Um, that I don't know what to do with because all my brushes are contained elsewhere. And then there's a box of coasters. I know it's crazy, but I got those at a thrift store for making books with. That's all sketchbooks and some watercolor paper. Um, so I kind of rotate my sketchbooks in, in and out as I fill them up. When I fill them up, they go, I don't know if you can see them, but in the, underneath that, that rack, there's like a big void of space and I just shove all the sketchbooks, sketchbooks that I finished and art journals that I finished up in there, up underneath there. So I'll have to think of something else as that's getting full, but for now that works. Um, this is the Land of Die Cutting. I've got, that's a new machine, the Sunlit machine there. Um, it has a, like an eight inch wide base so you can put big dies through it and it has like larger dies die platforms that go with it so that's really that's really neat um i haven't quite gotten the hang of it it is oh uh, well i've got the hang of it i guess you can tighten it up for like extra when you need extra pressure or you can loosen up when you don't i still use my big shot more than anything uh, because i have a lot of thick dies you can see my dies up there those are all my thick dies those are all my embossing folders this this guy is full that's all embossing folders and embossing plates. This is the set that I designed for Paper Craft Society. So I have it in there because I have my, my dies in there too. Um, this is the one that I've worked for. I have one that's pristine that I'll save for, you know, I don't know, posterity, I guess. 
Um, but I like to use the thick dies because I like to cut like mat board and things like that. So the Big Shot, I've had that since, I don't know, 2006 maybe, maybe even earlier. I got about the time I, the, the girls were born and they started scrap, I started scrapbooking. So that would have been 2004, but I don't think it was quite that early. I'm thinking they were like one or two when I got that. Um, and there's my big paper cutter that I've had since the mid nineties. That thing, it takes a look in and keeps on ticking. I use it every day and I've never had to like replace a blade or anything. It's amazing. And then there's yet another die cut machine under there. That's actually an Epic Six, I think is the name of it. Uh, it came with a letterpress system and I got it on clearance at AC Moore and I just wanted the letterpress, um, little platform thing and it was like on clearance of 40 bucks so i'm like well i get a die cut machine i get a set of dies i get a bunch of letterpress plates and the letterpress platform sold and then i had that for a backup i was doing a lot more die cutting back then and all of my thin dies are actually in this shoe box right here i don't keep a lot because i don't use the thin dies very much um i go through it every once in a while and i give them away quite frequently because i just um i just don't use them that much this right here is a, is a, vice, a bench vise or vice grip, um, and it is great because I can hold stuff in there when I want to, if I need to saw something off of something or whatnot. But I also put one of these magnetic trays on top and it can hold my dies when I'm die cutting. And I can also, there's a little part in the back I can hammer wire on if I need to. And I've got a little wire coiling gizmo hooked to the edge of that bench too, in case I want to coil some wire, which I have not done in a long time, but I still keep it there because why not, right? Um, this is Blick sulfite drawing paper. It's really handy. I like to use it for um, gel printing. I also like to use it to protect my work surface while I'm gel printing and sometimes you end up with a really cool print because of that. This is some neat paper here. Um, I'll, I got two packs of it. It's a Canadian made watercolor paper and um, what's it called? It works quite nicely. It's very thin, so you need to stretch it or just be, deal with the fact that it's thin. Um, cotton watercolor paper. The brand is Fiero, and I bought it from NASCO, I believe. FieroPaper.com. It was very inexpensive. So I'm always like trying out cheap watercolor paper because it's nice to have that for uh, kids' classes and stuff. So that way you can have, like, especially if you have something that performs really well and is very affordable. This is my... Uh, big bite crocodile. I don't use this one as much as the small one. Um, I find it kind of fiddly, but it's good if you're trying to get in the middle of like a large sheet of metal or a scrapbook page or something where you need to set an eyelet really far into a piece. This is a table easel that has Lucas oil paints in it. It was uh, when I was doing a bunch of work for Jerry's Iorama, they had sent that um, for me to review. And then I've got some other random boxes of supplies, um, got an extra big watercolor palette that I have not actually used yet, but I had to have it because it was on clearance for $10 and uh, I couldn't help myself. So lesson learned, if it's on sale, it's probably on sale for a reason. You probably don't, if you only buy it because it's on sale, you don't need it. But anyway, I kept it because I am a hoarder. And this is a set of vintage Winsor Newton pastels. I have um, a bunch of open stock ones in my pastel drawer, so I'm leaving that pristine for now. There's my travel oil painting um, box, and then I've just got a small set of cheap pastels here by Laurel, uh, Laurel Cornell, which, again, they're in there because I don't have a better place for them. I'll probably end up uh, giving a couple of these inexpensive sets away to my friend with a preschool. Uh, I'm going to tip this down so you can see what's on the bottom shelves here. It's hard to tell what the camera's gonna see because if I'm down here sharing it, then it's hard to see what's where the camera is. Um, and this is just uh, random things to die cut, like leftovers and stuff. I just keep them, keep them there. And these are like little paintings that I've done. Uh, I usually just write a note on the back and I put them in with, um, uh, orders. If I sell a painting and I send it out, I will, I'll add a little, I'll add a little note. Oh boy, that's close. That's come close. Um, my laminator and laminating pouches are in here. And then I've got hot glue guns in this little box under here, which I'm not going to pull out because that's not very interesting to look at. And then over on the other side, there's not a lot of interest under here. This is a, uh, like a wallpaper sample. I actually got boxes and boxes of wallpaper samples and ended up giving them away because like, I'm never going to use this stuff. Um, but a friend of mine uh, knew somebody getting rid of a bunch and offered them to me. And of course, I have a hard time saying no. And 
Uh, yeah, so I found a good home for them. This is all gel printing stuff. This is the heart shaped bubble wrap from Scrapbook Pal or no, Stationery Pal. And then I've got like, oh, different random texture plates and blocks and found objects and doodads and stamps and just stuff that I would use on the gel plate. That's all crammed in here. And uh, yeah, it's, it works pretty well. I've got some stencils, random, random, random stuff. Mostly uh, patterns though. They work great on the gel, the gel printing plate. So I use a lot of those. And then I've just got, again, some, some random tools, an old gallon of gesso, an old projector, you know, you know, the huge, the huge. Okay. Hello. I'm on the floor, friends. Okay. So I've got framing supplies in this. This is two um, of the Sterile, Style Master. I was going to say Sterilite, but Style Master, whatever, whatever brand, Iris Sterilite, doesn't matter. Stacked on top of each other, casters removed, uh, they're quite sturdy. In the bottom I have framing supplies. Nothing too exciting. And more framing supplies, wire, um, uh, hanging supplies, mat cutting supplies, that sort of thing. And more framing supplies, awls, knives, um, scrapers. You know, the, the, it's, the, it's the, the ugly stuff that isn't that exciting in an artist's life. Um, and here I've got random tools that I probably will never use. Why do I have them? I've got little, actually I do use these quite a bit. These are little, um, these are little taggers, kind of like uh, if you go and you buy some clothing, you know how it has a little, little tags? This hooks the tags. Um, and I've got a wood burning tool, I've got a bedazzler type thing, and I've got a little extra set of making memories um, tools. This little, little hammer, eyelet setter, needle, pliers, that sort of thing. Just some little crafty tools. That's actually a spare because I have another set of those that are in my office because they're so handy. And this is just the creative hot marks, which is a wood burning type, type thing there. Ooh. Will I get it back in the drawer? Who knows? Um, this is a little random. This is um, packaging. I've got some candy packaging, food packaging in here, but I've also got bags of sea glass for mosaics. Mostly for like, um, or for uh, like staging photos. Sometimes you want your photos to look kind of funky uh, and cool. And uh, I'm going to tip the camera up just a little bit. All right. Uh, this is drawing supplies. So I have, uh, let's see, what do we got here? What do we got? Blending stumps, erasers, variety of different erasers, um, refill leads for mechanical pencils, more refill leads, and more erasers. And these are super handy when you're doing drawing classes because um, you got you got plenty for everyone. Currently, the only classes I teach are on the road, but someday when I when I move into the addition with my studio and we move our master bedroom out of the addition, um, I might do classes here. Then I've got refill leads for mechanical pencils, the uh, colored mechanical pencils, and a variety of drawing pencils, and more drawing pencils, and more drawing pencils. So, yeah. I can draw until the end of time. And here, I have extra drawing pencils. I actually forgot about those. Um, so I have uh, black wing, matte drawing pencils, I have extra white, an extra box of white Prismacolors because I use those a lot. And I have these rainbow pencils, these are actually pretty cool. Um, I found them on Amazon. They, they've, got, they've got rainbow leads in them, they're fun, they're fun to sketch with. I bought one uh, open stock at a bookstore, I'm like, oh those are so cool. Um, and this is where the scrap, but the old, uh, the old, see if I reach right under here. The old uh, sketchbooks. So that's all sketchbooks back there and art journals. And I do have a couple packs of cardstock back there, but it's kind of like the eh, I, I just need a place to stash some stuff. Um, these are cords and wires for my Cricut machine. I've got a couple calendars that I think are really pretty that I'd like to actually frame because they're all like food illustrations. Um, a sketchbook I'm working my way through. TV tray that's going to go, I mean, a uh, Steering wheel tray that's going to go in my car, score pal, an extra board, aluminum paint, painting panel, and then just spaces to dry things. Um, up there, actually, I have an old laptop that died, but I don't know what to do with it because 
I couldn't clean it. I couldn't like wipe it or anything. So it's got all my information on it, but it's dead. So I don't really know what to do with that. So there's a lot of I don't know what to do with, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, here. Let's move over a little bit. This is cardstock. Um, these are colored card, heavyweight cardstock, and I've worked through a lot of this. I probably had five times that amount and I've used it for card bases and whatnot and I'm just trying to use it up because I really don't like the quality. It, the, the weight of it's really nice but the print quality because it's not a solid cardstock it's like a printed like the color on it is printed it's not like it's white on the inside but the printing quality is not consistent so I only use it for card bases where you're going to cover most of it up and but I don't want to waste it so I'm just using it up. And then I've got um, Accent Opaque 80 pound. That's okay for coloring. I like it for ink blending, but it's not the best quality cardstock in the world. Um, then I've got some card base weight cardstock. I have the Michaels and I also have some of the Joann's brand of that. I prefer the Michaels. I think it, I like the color a little bit better. Um, then I've got the same thing in craft and in cream. And then I've got an extra thing of craft because I'm almost out. And I used up a one of, um, of black. So I'm just using up what other black cardstock I have because I don't really need card base weight in black too often. I've got Nina Classic Crest, that's my favorite marker cardstock, and I've also got Gina K, I think, or and Paper Tray Ink cardstock there that's also really good for um, markers. I've got Glossy cardstock for alcohol ink. I've got just some random cream cardstocks, general purpose, and some general purpose white. So that's for like if I want to run something through the printer because the um, the heavier weight cardstocks generally don't go so well in the printer, although I have a new back feed printer now, they probably would work fine in it, but before they didn't. And then in the, uh, the thing right here, hopefully my camera will stay put, this is all of my colored cardstock. And that's a weird angle. Huh, anyway, anyway, say lovey. <laughs> what are you expecting? This is not one of these IKEA craft rooms. Nothing against those, but you know, this is this is what it is. Um, I got a great idea. Speaking of beautiful craft rooms, from Jennifer McGuire, she got these really thick plastic packets called uh, job ticket holders for her cardstock. And boy, did I think that was a good idea. And it is a fabulous idea. Thank you, Jennifer McGuire. That's why I have all my cardstock in. That's eight and a half by 11. My 12 by 12 cardstock just hangs out right next door to them just fine. This is a record player cabinet. Like it would hold records, record albums. And it's ideal for, um, for cardstock. And that's where I keep my colored cardstock. So that works out great. I have a step stool over here for when I need to reach things on the top shelf. And we'll take a look at my shelf here, which I feel like I did a really in-depth look at that shelf. I'm seeing where we're, where we're at. Um, up top, you know what? I'm just gonna get behind the camera because that makes way more sense. Um, up top, I have uh, a crate full of large ribbons and seasonal decor. I have a drying rack there that I made out of foam cord that I use when I'm drying like small oil painting panels. And then I've got a, um, uh, a bucket of feathers and a bucket of spools, so wooden spools. On the next row down, uh, going from the furthest away corner, I have a crate of deli paper for gel printing. I've got a bag of markers. I've got a bin of alphabet stamps. These are these are all stamps in here. I'll tip it up there and show you. It's all rubber stamps. I've got um, boxes of patterns. One is patterns I might make like vintage 70s, totally groovy patterns. And the other ones are kids' patterns that I like to use for collage because the pieces are smaller, so you get more um, of the, uh, you get more of like smaller little cute little pieces in your collage work. And then I've got backstock markers. These markers are still um, brands that are active. They're still products that are active. So I like to have, I like to keep those. So when I, when new markers come into review, I can compare them to their equivalents and see if it's just the same thing relabeled. Um, these are just empty tie-dye bottles in there for like if I might want to use them for paint or glue or whatever so I just keep them in that box because they fit really well. That's a couple just that's a box my mom painted that's a box I painted. I have old glasses in there because uh, I know I should just take them down to the Lions Club and donate them but um, I don't know I worry about the end of the world and I'm for some reason, I think I'm gonna need my old eyeglass prescriptions at the end of the world. Maybe I can barter with them. I don't know when the zombies come. I need I need therapy. Uh, and then the next row down. Oh gosh, what do we have down there? Uh, the next row down. This is my travel scrapbook bag. So I keep like um, 
some brush markers, some color pencils, uh, some ink blending thing, just a kind of like basic travel to a friend's house and scrapbook type stuff. Uh, this is my travel art bag. I have um, some brushes. I would just throw whatever watercolor palette. I think my portable painter's in there. Um, so I can just grab that and go. I Behind there I have like uh, some gear bags. Like I have an uh, easel bag and a light bulb bag if I have to take my light um, my lights with me. My Actually my lights are, well, they're in that little gap there. The light stands, but I don't need them too often. Here I have foam stamps, like big foam alphabets for making memories that were so popular. I still really like those, so I have them in there so I can grab them and, and find them and use them. These are all my large stencils, 12 by 12 stencils. Some are handmade, some are store-bought, and I like to grab those for gel printing, so I'll keep them in this dirty accordion folder, and they're really easy to get to. This creates all gift wrap, except for this heat tool, which I threw in there because I didn't have a better place for it. Couple boxes of doilies, mat board scraps, and on the bottom, hidden away, are extra class supplies because, um, you know, you have that stuff that you just need for classes. There'll be like palettes and like bags to sort things for classes and extra stamp sets for textures and whatnot that you'll only use in classes because they're doubles of things you already have. So all those doubles, all those things are on that bottom shelf because I don't need it very often. And then I've got a gallon of matte and gloss Mod Podge to round everything out. So that's kind of like the big junk, the junk corner, but it's not junk. It's stuff I actually use, but I don't need it that often. And then if we want to look right in that, uh, let's see, can I turn my camera enough? I think... Can I get that in there? I guess, I guess that's kind of, I can kind of see that. I got some extra art bags up there for transporting stuff. The, this has stretcher bars and large rolls of paper. Um, that has a bolt of cotton duck canvas and muslin for sewing and for projects and for stretching canvases. And then I got stretcher bars up there. Um, trash bags. And then I've got a, a roll of white paper. Uh, so like white butcher paper, and I'm not sure if you saw it in the other, um, in the other thing, but up high, I don't know if you saw that, I have craft paper, and I use that for wrapping presents. Moving right along, in this very dark area, maybe I can turn that light over there, <laughs> it's a little better, it's a good thing all my lights are actually hooked on to the joists, they're in clippy lights, so I don't have to have light stands on the floor. That's why my light stands are stored in a bag over there because um, I don't like to trip on cords. Well, who does? I don't think anyone lists that as their favorite things to do. I like long walks on the beach and tripping on cords, <laughs> looking for a Sagittarius. Uh, yeah, so I have everything clipped on my ceiling. So this is, uh, this is a lot of stuff, but up here I've got uh, like gold leaf and foil stuff. I've got a bag of uh, a case with some pencils in it. Um, little gel print book I made. I don't know why I still have that. Uh, a couple boxes of paint, a uh, paint that I really like, but you know I can't find anymore called Aquila. I really need to use that up before it goes bad. Um, here I have blending tools like my pan pastel blending tools, ink blending tools, and pan pastel sponges. Um, I've got some backstock of Prismacolor there for when I run out. I got a great deal on that on AC Moore. Uh, before they went out of business, they were $10 a set of 36 so I got a bunch of those. Um, just other pencils and color it uh, branded gel pens and markers and stuff. Um, budget color pencils, uh, some more budget colored pencils, and some real brush pens. Um, Brand new colored pencils. This is a colored pencil box my husband made me. I'll show you this really cool. And there's a, there's a diagram on my blog if you want to make one for yourself. But it's really nice. I had him make slots because at the time all my colored pencils would fit in this thing. Boy, times have changed. Um, but I have my uh, harder colored pencils in here. So um, and I designed it so that you could work on the surface too. So my husband made that for me from my designs, which is really cool. And it fits right in this little gap. Um, but I generally keep my pencil sets in their tins because I don't really. I have a couple of the cases, but I I find that I prefer working from tins or having them in cups. Um, and I'll just grab the set that I feel like working at, working with, take it to my office where I film, and work with it there, then put it back here when I'm done. Um, these are, I have some Prismacolor art sticks. These are so cool. I really like those. They don't make them anymore, sadly. Um, see, that's why you have to, that's, let's see, that's why we hoard supplies, because they, they don't make them anymore. Then what are you going to do, right? You gotta, hold on tight. I don't know. 
Uh, oh, my Pride and Joy, my other Pride and Joy, uh, Pan Pastels. I really, really love these. These are wonderful to work with. Um, they go with those blenders up there. And I think I have, uh, I have all of their colors. I went, uh, if you get this, the 20 painting set and then uh, the 20 tints, shades and extra dark shades, that will allow you to get all the colors without duplicates. So um, that's how I recommend getting them. Start with the painting set though, because you can mix all your other colors with that. But I warn you, they are so addictive. You'll probably want to collect them all. Um, and then I've got my gel plates here and I've got an extra one here. And I've got a couple smaller ones in my office because I like to have them if I just want to do a quick background on a card or something. Um, and then I've got this wonderful book uh, called Making Monotype She's using a gelatin plate and this is actually you can actually make your own gelatin plate with this not a reusable one but um, I really enjoyed this book I started gelatin printing back in the late 90s I took a workshop on it loved it so when the gel presses came out I was so excited to be able to have a vegan plate and one that didn't get moldy so that was good um, these are baskets so when I'm getting a project ready to go film in the other the filming room is on the other side of the stamp shelf which I think I showed you I don't even know I don't even know where I what I've started with because I just filmed the decluttering video so there may be redundancies um, I'll take a basket I'll get all the products that products that I need and then I'll take it into the other room to film like kind of like you're shopping at a store and then I'll bring back everything when I'm done so that just keeps me nice and organized this is all beading supplies over here um, these containers are great however they're no longer made but the neat thing about these is that they you have uh, so many one two three four five one, two, three, four, five. Five that lock together, and then they have these dividers, and they're on a spindle, and they have a handle, and they're just wonderful. I wish you could still get them. See? So compact. So they're they're loosely by color in these. And this is a shoe organizer that I found on the side of the road, because that's where most of my um most of my furniture comes from down here because I'd rather spend my money on supplies rather than storage. Um, this is all jewelry stuff. I have stringing wire and stuff like that up, up high. Uh, and then, yeah, I've got some more, um, more jewelry stuff. There's a beading loom. This is all jewelry stuff. Lila pretty much uses that now. I rarely do jewelry anymore. My scrapbooking, uh, my album, my new, my current album is here and all of my photos that I'm working on are in the album. Let me go up a little bit there. Uh, page protectors, that stuff. I've got some beading. I've got a um, silk screen. I've got some beading boards. Um, seasonal decoration stuff I don't need to get to very often up there. So, you know, put the ugly stuff that you don't need very much out of sight and hard to reach because you won't need to get to them very much. More beading stuff. Binding tools. There's my comb binder. Uh, my happy player punch. I'm just going to move this over a little bit actually. There we go. Hello. Happy Ben. Okay, uh, coil binder, and then I've got coils right here. These are the things you use with that. Um, happy planner punch, three ring punch, long reach stapler for pamphlet binding. Um, I have got some plastic beads, and I have got gouache and some prepar prepared boards for color pencil and pastel. Um, filing cabinet, mostly just business stuff and, ba and magazines that I've been published in, so not very exciting. That's such a stuff. A, uh, whatchamacallit, a file cabinet that I spray painted. Oh, my hair is doing weird things. Oh, well, we're all friends here. It doesn't matter. Um, these are just little containers that I put magnets on the back. They used to have masking tape in them. My, my brother-in-law worked at the mill, and all their tape came in these, and so they would just throw them away. And so a lot of people would save them for crafters, and that's how I got mine. In here, it's all acrylics and gel printing stuff. I feel like I've done this already, but I think... It was a different video. More acrylic mediums, pouring paint stuff, which I actually use as fluid paints. I don't paint pouring. It seems very wasteful. Um, liquid watercolors, the big ones from Blick. Ah, doesn't want to close. And also watercolor mediums. And I don't know why that's not closing. And then I've just got random uh, painting supplies. And I've got some oil painting stuff on the bottom, but I'm not going to open that because... Uh, it's pretty disheveled. And then underneath my table, we'll just scooch down here. Hello. Oh my goodness, it's kind of claustrophobic down here. All right, so I've got bins of inks. So these are my hydrous watercolors. So I'll take the whole bin. These are all watercolor products. I'll take the whole bin into the office and I'll film with it. 
Um, I got the Jane Davenport inks there. I've got the Dr. Peach Martin Spectralites. Um, acrylic inks. And I just save like tubs from like old broken um, storage things or I'll use trays. Whatever. It doesn't matter to me. And these are Bombay India inks. And then I've got some random pearlescent watercolor inks there. So I'm moving over. Oh, actually, on top of that, I've got my peg stamps. I'll just move that up there. That whole thing is peg stamps. Oh my gosh, that's really hard to see. So yeah, I can't. I've got both hands on the tripod. I can't move that. But this is dense. It's all peg stamps standing on end. Um, maybe I can show you that. See? Um, current markers. Bayanyo 2 Huhu current sets. So that when, I, when I'm doing a review, I can easily access those. I've got oddball markers, the chameleons and the chart pack, add markers, and I got my Spectrum Noir under there. Um, Spectrum Noir are probably my least favorite markers because they dry out a lot easier than others. Then in these big tubs, I have my yarn. I have them separated by warm and cool colors. And then this thing right here, I actually have, uh, it's just a little lap desk. I have my knitting looms, but um, I have a hard time parting with that. It seems like it would be really cool for something, but I don't know. I used to use it for secretary stuff. Um, and then we've got all of these little things here. I'm going to move the camera and figure out a better way to film this. Okay, I'm going to leave the camera here. I think we can get through this. Uh, this stuff's all empty from here to here. I just threw a basket in there because they fit there. So it's really handy if you are going to like put together stuff for a project and you can slide it in one of these. These cubes are all by Crop and Style. That company is out of business now, but um, maybe I think like Michael sells something similar called Jet Max or something to that effect. So you may be able to find something very similar to that. They're about 14 by 14. So if not, maybe somebody could build something like that for you if you're looking for it. This is all ribbon here, so um, it's not very exciting, but I find I do use these quite a bit. And this is adequate. I de-stashed a lot of ribbon. I used to work, I'd do some freelance work for Offre and Paper Mart, and I had so much ribbon um, because of that. So I got rid of a lot of it and just kind of kept um, some of the basic stuff. Though they're kind of a mess, but, uh, but I can find what I need and it keeps it clean and dust free. These are uh, Rick Racks and Raveled Roses. Uh, those are my favorite. I love the Raveled Rose trim. Um, it just kind of looks like a string of little roses. I just think it's really pretty. Um, so this is kind of more ladylike, delicate, feminine-ish. Um, not that it's only for girls. It could be good for anybody. Um, and this is just random collage junk. This is uh, stuff I'm kind of really considering getting rid of the stuff in this drawer. This is... Um, and then again, I just used a bunch of these twinkle type letters, but this is all that old Queen and Com Company uh, die cut felt. Remember that? Um, my mother gave me a bunch of these and I've used so much, but I still have so much left. And then I've got random tickets because I think they're kind of fun to collage with and random like blingy sparkle things. But to me, this stuff kind of looks really dated now. So I don't know, um, but it's not really hurting anything in this drawer. So for now it stays. Every year, I think. Maybe I should get rid of the uh, the felt. Um, this is all embossing stuff. I have embossing pens, a great book on embossing, and tons of embossing powders. That's a, it's a really fun drawer, I gotta say. Uh, this book, Embossing Techniques from A to Z from Fran Seaford, this is a great book. If you don't know what to do with your embossing powders, get this book. It is so worth it. Uh, and then I've got glitter and sequins and uh, some eco-friendly glitter that's all sequins in there it's a it's a sequin soup it's a mess and then i've got refills for my color it uh real brush pens in here so this is a pretty busy pretty busy drawer i've got a drawer of glitter that's a fun drawer i like using glitter then i've got two drawers of washi tape and there are a couple uh they've i've got like a tray on top of a bottom layer of washi tape in two drawers mind you it's a bit excessive but oh well we've got the stamping gear <laughs> yes I still have it 
Oh, I need to continue my series of what is this thing and why did I buy it? My uh, glass bead making safety gear and some extra glass bead making rods in my torch and vials and stuff like that. Um, then all of this is paper. That's the, that's what's in the rest of these things. It's a uh, it's, you know, scrap of paper, pattern paper, specialty paper, uh, everything but cardstock. And you saw where the cardstock was already. I'm hoping I haven't shown that yet, but that's just my uh, Rite Aid poster board rack of large pads of paper and also sheets of pastel paper down there at the bottom and sheets of drawing paper. And we're going to zoom next door. That's a hanging shoe organizer, which I have nailed to the center beam of the basement. And I have my acrylic paints sorted by color. So each of those little pockets has a piece of paper in it to represent a color. So like this is yellow green there. And then I have all my yellow green paints in there um, and so on and so forth. Looks like I lost a Oh, if that's a yellow green, that should be in there. Um, but my kids use that a lot too, so if things get a little, little mixed up, it's not a big deal. Now we'll move over here to my stamp wall, and I'm not sure if I shared this already in this video, so I'll just be brief. This is just a uh, wall I bought from a lady. It's a shelf I bought from a woman who had a stamp store, and she was getting out of the hobby, and she... Um, oops, I want to zoom out. That's as far out as I'm going to get. And so she was selling all of her um, displays. And so I was able to snag that. And uh, that it's just really handy. I love having all my wooden mount stamps on display because then I'm more likely to use them. And I do, like when I'm going for a stamp, I usually go to the wall first. If I don't have anything there, then I go to my stamp binders, which are right here. And they are all sorted by theme. And inside the stamp binders, I have page protectors with the stamps. And I'll show you one really quick. Like, for instance, this one is ABCs and 123s. So I have all alphabet stamps in either divided page protectors or just regular page protectors. But um, it's not the fanciest thing in the world. But it works. You know, I have a variety of different page protectors. It's not perfect or beautiful or fancy, but it works and I can find what I need and that's really the most important thing for me anyway. And then in those bins, I have my larger, I'm just going to zoom in, zoom in. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to pick up my tripod and bring you right over because, because why not? All right. So here are all like large background stamps and some larger stamp mounts, but I keep them all in here. I can flip through. I can find what I want. It's really easy. Origami supplies in between because why not? Then I've got either uh, stamps with matching dies or I have um, stamps with like accessories that match. So like I don't I actually have the matching dies for all of these, but I do have little stamps and stickers and whatnot that go together. I love sushi themed stamps, stamps and stuff. So I have that all together and um, yeah, just all the way through there. It's a uh, it's just how I'm keeping those. It's probably not the most perfect way to do it, but nothing in here is perfect. I don't really care about perfect. I care about it being useful. Okay, so this is one side under my bench, the bench up here where I do my big, uh, my big messy projects. Um, here I have like random, this, this top drawer isn't open very well, so it's not stuff that I need to get to very often, but it's like dominoes and Jenga blocks and just like marbles, weird things that I need sometimes, that I want sometimes. I've got my polymer clay here uh, and clay tools. This one's empty. This has uh, my my uh, lino carvers and uh, printmaking stuff. This has my pastes like these uh, opal polishes and cosmic shimmers and all that jazz and texture pastes and um, Dreamweaver's paste and things like that. This bottom drawer has my gouache tubes. It's got some like watercolor sponges. It's got some watercolor sticks, just some kind of random water-based media stuff. And then over here, I have all of my alcohol markers, or I should say all my alcohol marker sets by brand. This is all Artix uh, brush. These are the um, Uhuhu uh, Kawai markers and the Artify Enhanced markers are the same exact thing. They're just from two different companies, which you see a lot. I've got tri-color, uh, tri-blends from Spectrum Noir. Um, I think those are Bayanos. I'm not 100% sure, honestly. Oh, hoo-hoos. Those are actually, those are classic hoo-hoos, actually. 
Um, I've got my sprays there, and then I've got my Stampin' Up! ink pads in there because the, uh, the thing I made to store them, finally, after about a decade, just completely wore out. Um, yeah, just different sets of markers. These are all, like, ceramic plates that I use for palettes and ceramic palettes. I have them in here to keep them from getting damaged. And... Those are some uh, some more hoo-hoo brush markers. This is empty and that is empty. So uh, there's always new things coming and that way I have room to store them. Let's go around to the front of the desk so you can see what the, are in the cubes there. All right, this is twine and cording and I've got two boxes of this. So I've got like Baker's twine and jute and oh no, oh no friends. I just had a spill. I had a spill. Okay. Yep, more twine. <laughs> more uh, satin cord and, and that sort of thing. This is more for like if you like to do like the bracelets and stuff. I'll, I'll, whoa, and my camera is going to fall off the tripod. We're going to have more spills than we know what to do with there. So that's all um, cording and stuff. Let's just adjust that back up, shall we? Oh my. Hey, you know what though? It might actually even close. <laughs> I'll leave this for the next time. That will be just, that'll be upsetting. You didn't come here to watch me. Oh, good enough. We'll put that right back in there and I'll forget about it and then I'll come back and be like, what? Why is this like this? Um, this is knitting and crochet stuff, crochet hooks, circular needles, pom-pom makers. Um, I have decorative scissors and paper crimpers and a uh, bag maker punch, junk, bottle caps, q-tips, corks, coffee filters. These two things on the bottom are punches and they're heavy so they're at the bottom. This is envelopes, resin and clay molds. Doesn't have to look pretty if it's in a bin. And then under here, this is uh, kids craft type stuff, perler beads, which I spilled a ton of sorted perler beads the other day. Oh my word. Everywhere, they went everywhere. It was a mess. Uh, rainbow loom, some glass charms. Now let's go to the other end of this bench and see what we have over there. I don't know if I can even get the camera in there because there's very little space. So this is kind of like another junk drawer. I've got egg dyeing cups and palette like uh, swatches and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, this is really hard to get into this area. Well, let's just see. Those are folders with reference materials. I got my Xyron Creative Station on the bottom. Quilling tools and ribbon. Uh, the bottom, just bins of um, like mediums and stuff. It's like, ah. Uh, you know, gesso and that sort of thing. Yeah, I really don't have enough room to film over here. This is all letterpress. Letterpress things and treat cups and just like, I don't know, random, random stuff. But mostly letterpress papers and letterpress things. These are all my smaller stencils, six by six and smaller. So I get into this a lot when I'm gel, gel printing. It's, uh, it's handy. I just take the whole bin with me wherever I'm going. Um, I've got mediums, that's adhesive. This is a, these are some mediums. And then that's all mediums in that bottom bin over there. That is hard to see, but you know what? I think that's pretty much it. Well, there you have it. The Room of Horde uh, in all its technical glory, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I hope you enjoyed this uh, run through of stuff. I'm looking, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm seeing, oh, my bead kiln, the tiny little bead kiln stuff that's up on a shelf over there. I don't know. I think I do my best to show you everything that's in here. I'm sure I missed some stuff, but um, if you're wondering where my watercolor supplies are and some of the other stuff you know that I have but didn't see in this tour, it's probably because it's in my filming room or my office, and I'm going to do a tour of that as well. So, if it's not up on my channel yet, it will be soon, and if you're watching this in the future, then they're probably both up, and you can go check that out on the Frugal Crafter YouTube channel. I want to thank you so much for watching today. If you have any questions, let me know, and please don't, don't feel like you have to have this much stuff. I started off teaching um, 
in the 90s. I still teach workshops, I still teach classes, and I review products on YouTube all the time. I've been on YouTube for four, 13 years, and um, you just accumulate a lot of stuff in that time, and I was teaching for a decade before that. So, uh, so yeah, don't, don't, don't feel bad if you don't have quite a hoard of your own, and maybe be glad you don't have such a hoard because it can be a little overwhelming to deal with at times. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy crafting. Bye!